Hello and welcome to this Power BI video. In this video, we are going to discuss five financial functions, and this is a set of ten financial functions which are we are going to discuss in two videos. First of which we are going to discuss five, and these all financial functions are related to uh, you know present value, future value, loan, EMI, interest rate, etc. Uh, and in the next by the end of the next video, we will be going to show you how you can get the EMI details. In this one, we will tell you how you will get your EMI amount. and to get this in power bi uh, i need a few series for the display purpose and what if parameter was not sufficient because of its limitation so i went ahead and created four series one of them was principal amount and uh, this is a number which i have taken for principal amount it is around 150 million with a gap of 100 and 100 and that's going to create a very big file because it's a huge uh, series then i have taken interest rate which is a difference of 0.11 until 30% we have taken it, and then we have taken duration which is 600 uh, months with a gap of 111. That should be sufficient. And for EMI again we have taken a, a number around uh, 10 million, and EMI can be any one rupee or something like that. We can not take have taken a risk there so 111, but we are going to use it at one place as a future value. So that's going to limit the how much we present value and future value can take. now pmt is the first function which we wanted to discuss and that's what you also call as emi per month you supposed to pay requires three parameters which are basically the rate of interest and number of months and the principal amount and it's going to return a negative number basically your emi has to be deducted from your principal and that's why it return negative number we made it as it positive for the display purpose here and so three parameters you are giving you can play around here by you know moving the slicers Uh, once you move the slicer, you can get different different values. So if I make it seven percent, so rate of interest I tab out. You can see your EMI is going to uh, change. Uh, so it has changed. Now if instead of one eighty months you are paying two forty months, and you tab out, you know what is going to be your EMI. So you can play around. You can take different different amounts, and you will be able to know what is your EMI going to be over a period of time with the rate of interest. the second function which we want to discuss is pv and this is present value so basically in finance what happens if i am going to accumulate let's say 10 10k for 18 months and that value is 180 plus some interest what is going to be the current value for that one? so how much money should i have currently that is equivalent of that or what is i if suppose 18 after 18 month i have certain value what is the equivalent value of that today what is the present value of something so present value of 100 rupees will not be 100 in future it might be Go down uh, because of inflation. So, what is the present value? So, higher amount in the future will uh, be there. Uh, so, so that's the present value function which we have calculated. Again, present value function is going to be um, requiring three parameters: same rate of interest, month, and principal. And again, to get the positive number, we have multiplied by minus one. The next function which we plan to discuss, which is basically FP. so this is a future value function so basically in this case uh, this is very similar to example where we are going to get this recurring deposit amount for 1010k if you deposit and you will find if you calculate it's very near to your banking recurring deposit so 1010k you are um, depositing and there is a 6.5% rate of interest and then you do project it for 18 months so what is the amount you are going to get let's say you want to deposit for 24 months How much amount you are going to get? So this is the number of rate of interest increases. Let's say or decreases. Like right now it is decreasing everywhere. So what would happen? What is the amount you are going to get? So these are the different things you can play around and check on the file which we are going to share uh, on the community, uh, and uh, we are going to share in the link with the video also. Now the fourth function which we are going to discuss is rate, and that's uh, what we are going to do. Is we know principal, we know EMI amount, and we know. number of months what is the rate of interest and if you remember initially we had a particular emi amount the same emi amount we have taken it here and we say okay uh, if uh, i have a principal of this much i want to pay this much of emi and for the interim month what is the ideal rate of interest where i should be actually taking the loan so this is going to come out 6% and again if you remember we have done some few changes out here so we actually want 7% so 240 months we want to pay 7753 so we can go ahead and put this amount as Seven seven five three, and we can put this to forty months. So we should again get seven percent rate of interest, and that's exactly the reverse of it. Now the last function which we want to discuss in this video is RRI, and this RRI is a bit different from what we have calculated till now. So, but talking about two things which we already talked 
present value and the future value. So this is present value of 10K. I want to get 12,210 in the future and in 24 months what should be my rate of interest and nearly it is 10 percent that's where i calculated this number that it should be really near to around 10 percent uh, if the rate of interest is there and this is actually going to get monthly divided and then is going to be calculated back and so what is the calculation for rri again rri requires month principal amount and emi is going to return me monthly rate and that's why i have actually multiplied it by 12 and in case of rate, if uh, you have seen, the, we only, uh, again, in the case of rate also, we taken month, principal and EMI, and we have multiplied it by 12. And you might have seen that when we have discussed uh, PMT and all these functions, we have simply used uh, the future value and the present value functions. We have actually used rate, and this rate is rate per month. So what is the calculation for rate per month? So rate per month, what we have done is, based on this slicer which we are using here, uh, re annualized rate we have actually divided it by 100 because it's a number it should be a percentage we divide it by 100 and by 12 to make it monthly rate of interest uh, so I have actually ended up dividing by 1200 and but in case of month it is simply the max value which I have selected a principal is the max value which I selected and this is how we have come out so just a quick look at the formulas again so uh, your EMI formula is rate months and principal to the PMT function uh, present value formula again which is pretty easy this is again three parameters to PV rate month and principal future value again pretty easy formula so we have this rate months and principal then we have rate which is basically months and EMI we are giving negative out here remember that uh, these are decreasing amount which is getting calculated so uh, which we have to give and then the principal and then we are multiplying it by 12 because we are giving the months and it's going to come out on the rate and we are going to convert and well, rate and similarly RRI, RRI again we are going to get it monthly and we actually converted it into the annual rate so uh, if you have any other questions let us know uh, thanks for watching this video thank you